Hey guys, Drew Cook here with Bash Resource, and I'm going to talk about how I tackle uh, fall uh, events. You know, doing what we do, we don't really get to fish in the fall a lot, but COVID, you know, 2020, we, uh, we had a whole season in the fall pretty much. And I love fishing in the fall, but there's a couple things that, that I'm going to tell you that will help as you go to fish your, your fall tournaments. A lot of championships for your local team trails and stuff is going to be in the fall. Um, and one thing that you need to know is it's going to be tough. Like just accept the fact. And that's what I, I love because whenever you're at one of those fall tough grinding tournaments, if there's a hundred boats in it, 50 of them have already accepted defeat. Like mentally they're out of it. So you are only fishing against 50 now. Um, and that's something that, I, that I've always done. Just look forward to the, the ones that, you know, are really a struggle, a grind. You just gotta keep your head in it um, and just stay focused because you're only gonna get so many bites that uh, you really need to be, be focused whenever you do get one because you don't wanna miss it. You don't wanna lose it because you're probably not gonna get another opportunity. Um, well, I fish a lot of fall tournaments on grass lakes and that's probably my favorite, favorite fall time tournament is on grass lakes because you know you the way I do it is you know I find um, an area of the lake that I like um, and just go to flipping you know main river main lake stuff um, and just go I'm flipping every eight feet my trolling motors on seven I'm covering water Put it down, mark every bite you get, and a lot of times, whenever you zoom out and look at the big picture, you know, say you fished three miles, well, there's a quarter mile little stretch where I got five bites. Sure, I got, you know, two more bites on each side, but they're just spread out random fish. But that's where your your little your little juice is going to be, and you're just going to go back and forth and back and forth in there, and be able to grind out a really good limit. Um, another thing in the fall is you. You got to look at some of those those offshore places because there's still going to be fish out there. Um, you got to keep those honest. But whenever you do find them on those offshore places in the fall, you got to get really, really finessey with them. You know, you're you're not going to pull up there and throw a big crankbait and just bail them for 20 minutes. Now you're going to be pulling up there, throwing a a, a Nico rig or a drop shot. Um, Ned rig, things like that, that are that are super finessey, little ball head swim baits, things like that. Um, and another thing in the fall is, you know, your bait's going to be smaller. You'll still be able to find, like at home, a lot of fish school in the fall, but they they typical typically the big ones don't really school. But you'll have, you know, a bunch of say nicer ones. So if you have a, a place where they're schooling, a point or something like that, it's good to start. You know your morning off with that and uh and then go go flip and, and frog you know for the rest of the day if you're on a grass lake if not you know no grass lakes you're gonna really just kind of fish what what's around um where they're the, the baits moving to the back of the creek but a lot of times whenever you have these tournaments in the fall these fall tournaments it's like the end of dog days of summer and every once in a few days you get a cool night that, I mean, that's fall so it's still super tough but they know the, the days are getting shorter and things like that so the fish know and it just kind of puts them in a, in a really funny place but everything's moving to the back of the creek the, the shad are and you know you're gonna have to get small and, and find things you know back back in the creek but um you know whenever you're 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 doing that. You're still not going to get get that many bites. You know, throwing a top water is another uh, really good thing in the fall. Probably the main thing in the fall, if you can, um, you know, say uh, you're like a Lake Douglas or something like that. You get in that river, get in that running water. Um, you're going to have a lot more success than than in the not stagnant, but the non-moving lake. Uh, they're more apt to bite whenever they uh, whenever they get in that moving water or like a, a Lake Seminole you know running up the Flint in the fall is gonna 
gonna get you more bites and be able to catch more fish because it's just so tough and everything you know in the lake but whenever you you get that that flipping bite or whatever in the grass I've seen it many of times where there's actually you know they call it a stroke uh, where you flip into the same hole that you just pulled one out of and, you're, and you catch multiple fish and say so you keep going down and whenever you come back you know you catch another one right there in the same place that you, you just just flipped in um, I remember the first the first uh, real money championship that that we won on Lake Gunnersville we um, we had found some fish uh, and we're you know it was really tough fall October um, still really hot not not very cool at nights um, just really tough altogether we had found some fish and uh, for whatever reason I guess we it got a little cool the night before the tournament or the night of the first day of the tournament and we're flipping the outside edge you know of the hydrilla and you know not really getting getting any bites um, one fish blew up probably 15 feet in the grass where the cheese mat uh, you know goes from it goes from grass to the cheese mat that's you know say yellow and then it turns to orange uh, and what it was is it was where the actual hydrilla quit growing it was matted all the way over but the hydrilla quit growing because it had killed itself out and they were right there on that edge and once we found that out, you know, we were, we were catching them really good, but flipping way in there, weren't biting a frog, but flipping way back in there and, and, and getting, getting them to bite it. Another thing to, on a grass lake to, to not get sucked into is, uh, the, the small shad that'll be in the grass and you'll see fish blowing up on them. And that's the, they're so keyed in to that little bait that you can't throw you know, a frog to be able to get them to bite. They're only gonna eat that little stuff and it's super erratic. You can barely get one to bite. When you do, it's because, you know, you're skipping something really fast through there and they just see a glimpse and eat it. If you wanna shy away from those and find the ones that are, you know, in the mat that are still eating the bluegill and eating the crawfish. Um, they're not gonna be as many of them, but they're gonna be easier to catch and, and more than likely a little bit bigger. Um, the top water that time of year is, is another really good, good bait, you know, a buzz bait and a, a walking top water is my two main baits that I throw that time of year. Uh, one thing that I do with the buzz bait is uh, make it clack uh, in the fall, I make, make it clack in the fall and then early, early spring before they go on bed, just because I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know the answer to why uh, in the fall the clacking buzz bait you know, helps, but that's what I do. I always put a tow trailer on it, I, no skirt, um, and just fishing anywhere that you can kind of get and go, just like you would with the flipping, you know, whether it be grass lines or, or you know, regular wood banks, things like that, shade lines, whatever just go and then you'll you know run into them but you're not going to get a lot of bites that's just one thing you have to have to realize especially if you if you pull out a flipping stick and you're going flipping all day uh in a tournament you're just got to accept the fact that you know it it's not going to be a stellar day um, another thing that i do in the fall especially multi-day tournaments uh is i will flip a fluorocarbon uh, to braid you know with an FG knot I feel like that um, just whenever there's a lot of people doing the same thing that braid makes a sound you know as it's going through that grass and I think the fish get accustomed to that and it kind of just makes them weary you know say their buddy Bobby was sitting next to him he heard that and Bobby got snatched out of the grass you know, it just makes them a little little hesitant um, and I just feel like with the fluorocarbon leader you know, if one's there, he's, I don't want to give him anything to make him not bite it. Uh, 
And so with that, I'll use, you know, 60 pound braid and I'll make a probably an eight foot leader. Um, you want enough leader for it to go be, be quiet as it goes down at least halfway to the bottom. So if you're fishing an eight foot, uh, you want it to go, you know, at least four foot down before the knot goes through, but you still want the, the braid to get in the grass because that's the whole thing that helps you whenever you set the hook on it and it takes, through, takes out through the grass, it's gonna cut that grass, whether besides on floor carving where it's just gonna, it's gonna be a lot harder to cut, a lot bigger and you know, just kind of ball up and you have the opportunity to lose one. So you want the best of both worlds and uh, that's what I do in the fall. I, I also use a smaller uh, beaver bait. Um, just, I don't want, elephants eat peanuts and I don't want one to not bite it that in, in that time, you know, I want every bite that I can possibly get, I want to get. I don't want to have a bait that's too big for one or one that goes, yeah, you know, I just want a little snack. I don't want, the same one that's hungry is going to eat the small one, small bait too, if that makes sense. Uh, but that um, in the fall is, is one of my favorite times to fish and it's a tough time, but like I said, that's when most of your championships are. So the stuff that you work for all year um, that's your one shot. You just got to keep your head in it and, uh, you know, really, really focus on going in knowing that you're going to get X amount of bites and you got to stay in it and be able to land them, capitalize on them and have a good event. That's how I tackle fall time tournaments. I hope this helps you in the future.